special smile. To the Patrick Riggins Show. Here on the Libertarian. <laughs> this is what happens when you try to do three things at once. <laughs> Here on the Lighthouse Libertarian Radio Network. Well, I could play that whole song, but I think it runs almost four minutes, and I'm sure I'd be getting a knock on the studio door way before then. <laughs> Speaking of which, we're broadcasting from our home base here in Knoxville, Tennessee at News Talk 98.7 WOKI. <laughs> when we go away on break, what I'm doing is I, I back off the volume in the headphones a little bit. So when you go back, come back in... I have to reach way over and turn that back up. Otherwise, you can't hear what you're saying in your head, and it sounds really weird. <laughs> That's no excuse not to be professional, though. <laughs> All right. This Sorry, hour. Patrick, man up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we need to, like, um, pipe that stuff. <laughs> was that on the air, Jay, or was that just in my head? Oh, no, it was on the air. So. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't waste an opportunity to lambast you behind the scenes. Oh, okay. Uh, it was that snide remark when you, uh, I don't know, missed my music on the last out. I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Lies perpetrated by the NSA. Yes, and that's who it was. <laughs> They're over here screwing around with my show. <laughs> it's like our very own episode of Homeland. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, now I thought I, I heard a helicopter up on the roof earlier. <laughs> and I thought it's a little too early for Santa. So <laughs> He doesn't go in the black ones. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, if he hangs around, um, well, I guess, uh, was it Virginia up there uh, where that uh, headquarters is located? Or out in Salt Lake City, he'll, he'll get questioned anyway. <laughs> All, All right. I'm saying is if Santa had a website, I'm sure it would work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll just let that go. <laughs> it certainly would work. I don't know, though. Santa, he's not to run down this trail too much, but Santa's kind of in a commune up there. <laughs> so there's not not a lot of capitalism going on up there, Santa. So, you know, what's the motivation? It You know, you, you could be looking at another um, USSR collapse. <laughs> Oh, I ought to Are play you saying that. that Santa is going to lead a coup on the United States? Well, he does wear red. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. <laughs> Let's try to get our listeners back now. <laughs> All right. This hour, we've been talking a lot about these spying revelations and all this stuff being released by Edward Snowden. And every time something new comes out, I find myself getting a little irritated at people who are passing these stories around the internet and not just about this spying but any story that's done from an angle that isn't liberal i get these conservatives and even people who believe in libertarian principles a whole lot of them seem to seek this external validation that what they believe is correct this positive reinforcement from other people and mainly liberals and the media that their personal principles are the correct ones to have. I hear it a lot when I talk to people. I read it on Facebook and in emails that we get. Someone will say, hey, look, John Stewart made fun of Obama on this, or CNN did an expose on this liberal story, or Saturday Night Live made fun of the administration. These things only have to happen one time, and it's all over the Internet. Look, these liberals aren't going to change their minds and start marching towards more freedom and liberty. It just isn't going to happen. They don't believe that way. Their principles are rooted in government solutions to every problem. They're still fighting for the liberal side of these issues. They still want government in charge of everything. But whenever the mainstream media or prominent liberal makes a statement that could be taken as undercutting the liberal agenda or the Obama administration, this conservative side jumps all over it like some dog welcoming home its owner it's like this is the hot guy or girl in, in high school and they glance at you walking down the hall between classes and all of a sudden now you're married this person is so in love with you now they finally seem past your thick glasses and braces to the wonderful person inside 
And you knew this day would come. You knew eventually they'd get tired of dating that other hot, beautiful person and come around to seeing you for who you really are. We criticize our congressional representatives for doing this very thing when they get to Washington. They run on a bunch of campaign promises that sound so good and they really understand your principles. They're so articulate and charismatic. This person is going to be one of the ones who turns around the government. But then when they get to Washington, all of a sudden they change. They start compromising on issues. They start listening to what the media is telling them. They start believing every poll that comes out. And here you sit back in your congressional district wondering, hey, what happened? It's the same thing you're experiencing when you swoon at the fact some liberal or some mainstream media outlet gives you the smallest morsel of a statement that could be considered as agreeing with your principles. Your representative is sitting up there in Washington wanting to be part of the cool kids, wanting to be invited to their cool parties. But they don't get that by fighting against government because these so-called cool people agree with government. They like government. They want to see more of it. And if your representative is fighting against that, then they're the enemy. And a lot of people can't deal with that role in life, at least when it comes to people they secretly admire. These cool people are eating at the cool table in the lunchroom. But our government fighter is relegated to the nerd table, to the table where the untouchables sit, where all the uncool people have to eat their lunch. And a lot of people can't handle that. They might have already gone through it in high school and don't want to relive it, or, or they were part of the cool kids then and don't want to be left out now that they're in Washington. Either way, they want to be loved. They want to be part of the in crowd. They want to be mentioned in the society section of the newspaper. So what do they do? Well, the only thing they can do to get into the cool kids' good graces, vote like they're told. Vote for government programs, government solutions to everything. This is why I think it's so funny to see other conservatives and, yes, even libertarians who jump at the chance to show people, look, John Stewart agrees with me, or MSC, MSNBC, boy, they really raked that senator over the coals last night. This external validation of your principles shouldn't be needed. If you've thought about them, you've tested them and proved them to yourself over the years. If you know you're right, then who cares if some liberal agrees with you or not? This is one of the reasons I don't particularly care to have guests on this show. What are they going to say? Well, if they're on this show, it's probably going to be the exact same thing I'm saying or have said. I don't need someone else telling me I'm correct. I know I am. That's not cockiness. That's confidence. Unfortunately, real confidence is so lacking in today's America that people often mistake it for cockiness. If you've thought about the principles you have, if you've tested them against other ideas, if you're sure you're correct on an issue, then don't be afraid to stand up for it. This is the problem in Washington. None of these politicians have the assurance of their principles to stand firm in the face of oppression. Or opposition, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. They're, they'll all eventually fold. This the media, the Washington establishment, their party leaders. All of these people wear down anyone who tries to stand on principle. And as I just mentioned, there's not a whole lot of people with that strong a character to stick to their guns in the heat of the battle. That's why you need to call them and reassure them, not just when you're mad at them, but when they're doing something good. Stay on them. Keep the fight going. Stay with where you're going. Because if you don't, you get what happens during the shutdown. You get Republicans who cave and decide, I can't stand the heat. We're up on the last break of the show this week. And coming up in the next segment, we'll change gears a little bit. And we'll get to something I like to call morality and government. We'll hit that before we get, run out of time this hour. When we come back here on the Patrick Regan Show. Joke, I like to- 